the belief system that psychiatry has these days is no longer has anything to do with scientific evidence. Describe uh, a typical ADHD in terms of symptomatology. Ah, it is hard. It's very hard to know how to answer this question. These kids, uh, in in my experience, when you see these kids, um, they are. You know, several standard deviations different in terms of they cannot sit still, they cannot attend, they're, um, they cannot, you know, even when... Um, they confessed they, they had no evidence that it was a disease. At this time, we do not have a diagnostic test for ADHD. Therefore, the validity of the disorder continues to be a problem. In 1998, the National Institute of Mental Health held what's called a Consensus Development Conference in which the aim was to push the diagnosis of ADHD and to push the stimulant drugs. They had 30 experts come together to address an objective panel which would then give a consensus as to what the issues were. And the result was a consensus statement which said that ADHD was controversial, that it had no proven biological basis, that there was a risk of over-medicating our children, and that stimulant drugs have a lot of serious adverse effects. We do not have an independent diagnostic and valid test, such as a biological test or such as a blood test. I still want to get to the other part of the question, which is just a description of what you might yes. be looking for. Okay. But before, before you go on to that, it sounds a little bit like you're saying that the definition is a little like the Supreme Court's definition of pornography, which is you know it when you see it. No, I, I'm concerned. I, I, we're we're, we're going to disagree, and uh, I would like uh, any member of the panel to describe uh, a typical ADHD in terms of symptomatology. Mark, would you like to since you see them in your practice. There, I mean, I think the panel has been frank and, you know, the difficulties here are immense in terms of... of uh, um, they were caught in a lie I mean, at the consensus conference. Uh, it is hard. It's very hard to know how to answer this question. These kids, uh, in, in my experience, when you see these kids, um, they are, you know, several standard deviations different in terms of they cannot sit still, they cannot attend, they're, um, they cannot, you know, even when, um, uh, they are as if driven by a motor. There are some good clinical descriptions um, of these kids. I think part of the problem is in the community when you are a physician and somebody comes to you as a parent and says my child might have attention deficit disorder, it's very difficult to know what to do and how much confirmation do you need. Do you need a, a teacher who also, uh, who sees many kids and says this kid is two standard deviations different from the other kids in my classroom. The parent says this kid is different and he, it's, it's, um, um, and then, and then even if you say this child is different, you have immense problems with trying to say why is this child different? Is this child being abused? Is this child uh, lead poisoned? Um, As of that, the consensus conference, they confessed they, they had no evidence that it was a disease. I think, you know, the, I don't think the panel is saying anything different, although we said it in more sophisticated ways, is the diagnosis is a mess. But there is, there is, um, we all have a belief that we are dealing with a very serious core problem and that we have a diagnosis that allows us to communicate and gives us research, um, uh, generates uh, sort of ideas for research. And I think, you know, we, uh, I, I do, I think the pro part of the problem is the profession keeps changing the diagnosis. We have DSM-4, the latest thing, but we have no we have no guarantee that DSM-5 won't give us yet another diagnosis. We forced them under heavy questioning to admit that all the children who were showing up with brain abnormalities in fact had long drug histories, not just even stimulants, but 
a variety of different kinds of drugs. And we know from animal experiments that many psychiatric drugs, including the stimulants, can cause permanent changes in the brain. The belief system that psychiatry has these days is no longer has anything to do with scientific evidence. It's in, in the realm of religion. Nowhere in the uh, brain or body of uh, children said to have ADD or ADHD uh, can an abnormality be found or has an abnormality ever been found uh, prior to their drugging. Uh, in other words, their drugging is the first abnormality. However, after the consensus conference was over and the panel had disbanded, the government simply rewrote it and came out with their own conclusions anyway.